So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Now we'll look at one more example of determining the equation of a rational function from the graph of the function. And we'll find our rational function in factored form, or this form here, where a is a constant, and then we'll have factors in the numerator and factors in the denominator based upon the properties of the graph. So looking at the graph, let's start by identifying our intercepts. Notice how the x-intercept here is positive one. This would be the point one, zero. But notice how at this x-intercept, the graph doesn't cross the x-axis, it touches it, and then bounces back. This will affect the factors in our rational function. And then we also have a y-intercept here at negative two, so the function contains the point zero, negative two. Now let's take a look at our vertical asymptotes. We have one here at x equals two. We have another one here it's a little bit more difficult to see, but it is x equals negative one. I do want to point out that notice that x equals two, on one side the graph approaches upward toward the vertical asymptote, and the other side it approaches downward. But at x equals negative one, notice how on both sides the graph is approaching downward toward the vertical asymptote. This is going to affect, again, the factors of a rational function. We also need to recognize that knowing the equations of the vertical asymptotes gives us information about the factors of the denominator, and knowing the x-intercept, or the zero of the function, gives us information about the factors of the numerator. And then we have this extra point here, the y-intercept, which we can use to determine this constant value, or the value of a. So let's begin to set this up. We'll have f of x equals a times a rational function based upon the properties of the graph. We'll find a in the second step. So let's start by considering the vertical asymptotes. Remember, we find the vertical asymptotes by finding the zeros of the denominator, which means if x equals negative one is a vertical asymptote, then x plus one must be a factor in the denominator. But there's more to it than just that. Because of how the graph behaves here, meaning it approaches the vertical asymptote downward on both sides, we're going to have to have two factors of x plus one. And then because we have a vertical asymptote at x equals two, we must have a factor of x minus two. Again, because it approaches up on one side and down on the other, we only need one factor of x minus two. Now let's consider the factors of the numerator. Because of the x-intercept one comma zero, we know f of one equals zero, which means one is a zero of the function and the zeros of the function come from where the numerator is equal to zero. So if one is a zero of the function, the numerator must contain a factor of x minus one. But again, there's more to it than just that. Because the graph touches at x equals one, but doesn't cross the x-axis, we need two factors of x minus one. Now for the last step, we'll determine the value of a. Using the y-intercept of the point zero, negative two, we know that f of zero must equal negative two. So we'll find f of zero by substituting zero for x, and this will allow us to find the value of a. So we'll have a times, again, if x is zero, we would have negative one squared in the numerator, and then we'd have positive one squared in the denominator, and also a negative two. And this must equal negative two. So looking at this fraction here, we'd have positive one over negative two, so we have negative one half, a equals negative two, multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of negative one half, that'd be negative two over one, or just negative two if we want. This simplifies to a. On the right we have positive four, which means our rational function is f of x equals, if a is four, we'll have four times the quantity x minus one squared, divided by two factors of x plus one, and one factor of x minus two. And this is the function that we're looking for. 
notice how the degree of the numerator is two, the degree of the denominator would be three, and because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, we would have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Looking at our graph, y equals zero is the x-axis. Notice how the graph is approaching the x-axis to the left and to the right. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.